today we're going to look at string methods. These are built-in pieces of functionality that exist as part of every string object. So if you have a string, which is a piece of text, something in JavaScript that you wrap in a piece, uh, set of quotation marks, that string, because it is a string, has a list of methods that you can use. So in this file right here, I've got uh, one div called wrapper. And I'm going to be putting the output from these string functions inside this one div right here. Here's our script file. And the string methods we're going to look at are substring, index of, split, to uppercase, and to lowercase. So first, I'm going to set up that output area. I'm going to create a variable called wrap. That's going to go there. And then down inside my init function, the function that runs when the page finishes loading, inside here, wrap is going to be set to document dot get element by ID wrapper. Now I can use that variable over and over and over again, whether it's in this function or in other functions. Because I declared it globally, it's going to be shared amongst all the other functions if I create other functions. This is where we're going to put our output. So we need a string now. Bob Smith. We're going to use this name. There we go. That string, Bob Smith, saved inside the variable name, is going to be what we use for our string functions here. All right. So the first method, substring, you can see up here that it has two possible parameters that we add into it. Start position and ending position. Start position is what position we start looking at the string at, and end position is where we stop looking at the string. So let's use this method. We'll take the variable name, and let's put it into a new variable called output1. Take the variable name and append substring. There we go. You can see that uh, Dreamweaver is giving me the autocode complete here, substring, start, and end. So what we want to do is we need to put in these two values, the starting position and the ending position for what we want to extract. Only thing to keep in mind is that computers do start counting at zero. So the letter B, the capital letter B here, that's going to be position zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So positions, zero, positions 0 through 8 are going to be these letters. So let's extract the last name, Smith. So starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And ending at, now this one's an optional parameter. If I just said substring 4, it would extract from 4 to the very end. But to demonstrate the two parameters, I'm going to put that in as well. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So position 8. There we go. That is Smith. Name.substring 4, 8 will extract Smith from the string Bob space Smith. So just to demonstrate, I'm going to place this inside of the wrapper. I'll call the append child method to add the HTML. Create element, a new paragraph. There we go. That's going to put a new paragraph inside of wrapper, and then we want to put the string output inside of that. And we will. Here's another way of doing it get elements by tag name P. And I know it's the first one on the page, it's the only one on the page. So that inner HTML equals output 1. So a few new things in here. We've got the create element being used without a variable, just directly inside of the append child method. So this is going to place a brand new paragraph inside the wrapper. And then we're going to access that paragraph instead of through a variable, just by saying, get the first paragraph on the page. Now I'm going to use the inner HTML property, which allows us to put text and or HTML inside of an object. And I'm going to set that equal to output1, which was the name Smith. All right, so we'll save that. 
we'll jump over to the browser, refresh this page, and there it is, Smith. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, where's the H? Why is there only four characters here? Sure, this is the right number that we entered at the end. If we jump back to the script, we can take a look at that. There we go. Four through eight. Well, zero, one, two, three, four. The S is the four, five, six, seven, eight. H is character number eight. The reason is that this number here is an up to but not including number. So if I want to show the entire thing, I have to change that to a nine. We jump back to the browser, reload this, and there it is. There's the H coming up. Okay, so that is the substring method. The other option I was talking about, just to show for completeness sake, if I just put in the four, this is my starting position, it will automatically go to the end. There, refresh the page, you get the exact same result. All right, moving on to the next method. There we go. So I'll scroll this up a little bit. We're going to look at the index of method. This is looking within a string for other substrings. So we've got our name, Bob Smith. We haven't changed that at all. Create an output to equals name dot index of and we say this is what I'm looking for I'm gonna say lowercase o I want to find out if and where there is a lowercase o within the string Bob space Smith we'll do the same thing here just copy and paste this code just make it quick change this to output too so whatever the answer is from index of o that will be written out in the second paragraph on the page. So we'll jump in here. One. There we go. One is the number that comes back. Here's the string. Bob Smith, position zero, position one. So in position one, we do find a lowercase o. If I said lowercase i, four, five, six, we should get the number six showing up. There it is, six. Now if I change this to a one here, I want to be able to see the output from both things. Reload this. There we go. There's the smith and there's the number six. If we do not find the letter, let's say I was looking for the letter E inside of this string. When I jump back here and reload the page, negative one. That is the answer that you get whenever you cannot find what you're looking for. So if index of doesn't find whatever you put here inside of this string, then negative one's gonna be the answer. We can look for more than one character. Here, Smith, I'm looking for the string Smith inside of Bob space Smith. I should get it, and I should get number four. There it is. Okay, so index of allows us to search through a string to find another string. Next method, split. What this one's going to do is it, it, will, it will break up a string. And you can see in the autocomplete here, split, separator, limit. And uh, limit is inside square brackets, which means that's an optional parameter. Let's just look at it with a separator. There we go. So name, split apart, on a space. I just put it one single space in between the quotation marks here. I'm going to do the same thing here. Copy and paste all that. I'll make it the third paragraph on the page. And make sure we output variable 3 here. Bob, comma, Smith. So those are the two parts this is actually creating an array. If I was to say output 3 sub 0, output 3 is an array. So we'll see the first element inside this array. Bob. If I go in there and I say give me part number 1 from the array. Reload that. There we are. 
Smith. So we're able to get an array from a string. We break apart the string on whatever character is inside here. So Smith has a space in front of it here, space in between Bob and Smith. That is going to be the breaking point. The breaking point will not be included in the final array. We'll just get an array that has two parts. And here I'll test to see if it's two parts. Length. Length is a property of any array that tells you how many elements are in that array. Reload. Two. The array has two elements inside of it. Okay, great. And now we're on to the final one. To uppercase to lowercase. Var output four equals name to uppercase. Output four. This will be paragraph number three on the page. So what we're doing is we're taking the contents of the variable name, which is Bob Space Smith, and converting the entire thing to uppercase. There it is, Bob Smith, all in uppercase. Now we haven't changed the original value of name. Name is the same. But we've taken the value from name, converted that to uppercase, and the result of that operation is what's put into output 4. And there is another alternative to lowercase. There we go. Does the same sort of thing, just converts every character to lowercase. And there we have it. Those are a series of string methods.